Eric Sue has a pretty massive audience. His YouTube channel boasts 161,000 subscribers, and his two podcasts, Marketing School and Leveling Up, have generated tens of millions of downloads. But Eric doesn't bother with traditional media monetization models like advertising or subscriptions. Instead, he leverages his influence to drive clients to Single Grain, a marketing agency he owns. As that business grew, he was able to acquire more agencies and add to Single Grain's capabilities, and it now works with some of the world's largest brands. In a recent interview, Eric explained how he met his co-host, where he found his audience, and why he chose to monetize his content with the services business. Hello, I'm Simon Owens, and this is The Business of Content, the show about how publishers create, distribute, and monetize their digital content. If you want to listen to an audio version of this show, subscribe to The Business of Content wherever you get your podcasts. By the way, have you ever wondered how I monetize this show? It's entirely reliant on subscriptions to my Substack newsletter. When you subscribe, you're able to book a half hour introductory phone call with me. You also receive subscriber only interviews with some of the world's most successful media entrepreneurs. Support the work I do here by subscribing at simonowens.substack.com. That's simonowens.substack.com. Or just Google the words Simon Owens and newsletter. And finally, if you're on the lookout for interviews with the world's most successful media entrepreneurs about how they built their businesses, then this is the show for you. So take a few moments to hit the subscribe button down below. Okay, let's jump into the interview. Hey, Eric, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Simon. So you currently host and co-host two very popular podcasts, which we're going to get to talk about in a few minutes. Um, but both of them are kind of loosely centered on marketing, um, but also a little bit of entrepreneurship and a few other things. How did you get into marketing in the first place? Yeah, so I was coming out of the great financial crisis. The only job I could find was a $32,000 a year salary job doing data entry. Um, and you know, I was at that time I was actually playing online poker while I was at work. And then my friend told me about this digital marketing thing. Uh, long story short, you know, she, she now, she went to go work at Airbnb. Now I think she just joined Netflix. Um, and you know, I, I picked up digital marketing, learned SEO and started learning all these other things and kind of never looked back from there. Yeah. So this was like 2010 or so. Yeah. 2010. Exactly. And so you say SEO. So like, what does that mean? Like, were you kind of like a freelance SEO gun, just emailing mm -hmm. businesses saying, Hey, your SEO sucks. Let me help you. Or like, what was kind of your intro entree into that world? Yeah. So I started working for a couple of companies initially. And then, so I was, I think I was 23 at the time. And then by age 25, I'd become a director of marketing. Um, and then at, at, at a startup, um, and Basically, I, I kind of cut my teeth doing SEO at agencies, and basically that was helping people rank higher on Google and all that, you know, building links and all the you know annoying stuff. Um, but yeah, I it was it was pretty quick initially. I, I would just say the 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 start to my career. Um, but yeah, that that's how it all started out. And SEO was kind of like your, I know your agency does a lot of other things, but that yeah. was kind of your initial specialty. Yeah, that was the that was the bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So you eventually meet this guy named Neil Patel, which I'm sure a lot of my listeners slash viewers know who he is. Uh, but but who is he and, and how did you end up meeting him? Yeah. So at age 24, 25 or so, I was I was reading a lot of blogs. I was eating up a lot of this SEO knowledge. And the, one of the guys that was leading in the space at the time was, was this guy named Neil Patel. And he had this blog called Quick Sprout. And he would often talk about how he spent like you know, millions of dollars on clothes and this is the ROI that he got or like, you know, this is the, like he shared all the data, all the information on how his tests are running and everything. So I was like, okay, this guy's actually transparent. Um, you know, I'm going to follow this guy. One time he wrote a blog post that didn't make any sense to me and it sounded like he was just making up words. And so I decided to email him. I was like, hey, it kind of sounds like you're making this up, right? And usually when you get called out, you, you would ignore the person, but um, he actually responded to me and he responded to me and he kept taking the relationship further and further in a positive way. I'm like, why is he doing this? Right. Um, eventually he's like, dude, let's just get on the phone. And eventually that led to do, let's just meet at my favorite restaurant, which is Taco Bell at the time. Um, and that's how we met in person. Um, and yeah, that's how the relationship started. And yeah, like he's kind of like a build in public person, kind of how he gets so famous is that he will figure out some kind of strategy or something. And then we'll write a post like detailing. And sometimes we'll actually like give you the exact numbers. Like I, I remember one series I read of his is he created, he decided as, as an experiment to, to start like a health and fitness blog yeah. and, and develop his own line of supplements and stuff like that. And, yep. and it was, it was less to make money, but, and more to prove that he could start something from scratch. And he like, he purposely didn't link to it from his website. So he mm -hmm. couldn't give himself an unfair advantage or I, 
maybe if I'm remembering correctly, he didn't even name the website on this blog just so nobody could say, oh, you're already famous. That's right. why this, this site was successful. And he generated, I forget how much revenue in like 12 months or something like that. So that's, yep. that's kind of the stuff that he's sort of famous for. And he's also known for like SEO, but then also marketing optimization, stuff like that. So you meet at a Taco Bell, you're, you start that relationship. Is it, did you start out like working for him or like what was... What was kind of the business relationship? No, it, it, we've always just kind of been friends. And keep in mind, so at the time, I was, again, like 24 years old. He's only a year older than me, so he was 25. Um, and so he, he was very much getting started with his career, too. So his whole thing was he was just trying to figure out how to make more money in, in, in general, right? And then, you know, now today, he, he's, he's kind of focused on one thing. I would say in our mid-20s, we we're kind of trying to do everything. We weren't really sure what we wanted to stick with. Everything seemed like a you know an opportunity, right? We would attack every single opportunity, and we'd end up going nowhere. Um, and so we're just, we'd always just, you know, we'd hang out on Skype back in the day. He'd call me all the time. Hey, what do you think about this title over here? Like, what do you think about this tweet over here? So he'd always ask me for my opinion. Um, I did do like some, like, you know, I've ran paid media for him for maybe like a couple months or so. Um, but, you know, we've always just helped each other out. And um, e even today, you know, um, he's, he's trying to make some, some, some acquisition moves. And I just recently, like, I, I made like two or three introductions for him. So it's, it's never been ab about like a transactional relationship. So it's never been like, you were never in business together. Oh, you sort of were. We'll talk about yeah. the podcast in a second, but like you always ran like separate businesses. Correct. Yeah. So how did you get the idea for like launching a podcast together? Yeah, it's funny because he kind of incepted himself into it. So I've always talked about how podcasts have been really beneficial to me. I started in 2013 or so it's been 11, almost 12 years now since I started podcasting. Um, and then we were walking, um, we were walking around, I think in Beverly Hills and just down the street, we we're getting smoothies. And, um, you know, I was just telling him how beneficial it's been to me, all the amazing people I've met, you know, you know, me being invited to speak at different conferences around the world. And he turns to me and he's like, like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, let's do the podcast. And so that's actually what led to the podcast uh, marketing school. And uh, we've been doing that for seven coming up on, on eight years now. And um, so what yeah, you say it was good. leading to, so you already had had a podcast that you were already doing that was leading to stuff. Correct. Yeah. So I had, so I have my entrepreneurial podcast called leveling up. That's a YouTube channel. And then uh, marketing school is the second one that came about. Oh, I thought marketing school was first and leveling up came second. So leveling up was, so tell me about leveling up. What was, how did that initial, when did that initially, launch and what was the initial format for that so that was 2013 or so and there's a guy at the time named andrew warner and he had a podcast called mixergy and he'd interview all these entrepreneurs and i thought it would be really interesting if i could talk to entrepreneurs or marketers and, and approach it from a marketing angle and nobody else was doing that at the time and um i hit it pretty hard i mean you know some of my first guests were like people that are familiar with with seo ran fishkin from moz i had like noah kagan i had all these people initially the first 10 guests or so um was very nervous about it and um, yeah, I, that's what led to, um, again, a lot of great relationships, a lot of speaking opportunities, and a lot of business opportunities too. And um, yeah, a lot of lessons learned. And obviously, like, back then, podcasting was much smaller, Apple was dominant, Spotify had not gotten into podcasting yet. That was pre serial. Um, you know, so that huge explosion that happened. Um, so did you, was it, did you find you built a large audience or was it just mainly like a small influential yeah. audience to start with? I'll, I'll share some lessons here. And so I will say after the first year, I was probably spending like six to eight hours a week on this. Keep in mind while I was trying to save my, my failing business at the time. Um, but I was spending eight hours per week on it. And all I had to show after the first 12 months were nine downloads a day, which is peanuts, nothing. Right. Um, I did the same thing for another year. 30 downloads a day after the second year. It wasn't until the third year where I started getting like 100,000 plus downloads a month. And so, you know, when people say it typically takes two to like probably three plus years to build an audience or a business, that's very true. Um, the other thing I would say is, I wish I had stuck with that podcast longer because I was growing actually very quickly on YouTube because in, in back in 2012, 2013 or so, YouTube was still the very, very much the wild, wild west. And some of these interviews would get like 20 to 40,000 views or so. Had I just kept going on it, I think it would have became like really big, but I decided I, I got shiny object syndrome. I got distracted by other things. So there's two lessons there. One, it takes three years Two, you know, if you, you got something good going, stick with it.
So you were, so I assume that the, also, I'm making all kinds of bad assumptions here is I thought YouTube maybe came later, but like you were actually early to, tr to the trend of posting the interviews. Like were you doing over like Zoom or something like that? Yeah, I was doing them on Skype um, and I had like this, this, you know, weird background, poor lighting. I had like spiky hair at the time and it, you know, the, one of the things was like curved out on the background. <laughs> um, so it was a very poor man setup, but um, it, it worked. And um, all I did was I, I was using um, one of our the pod podcast hosts at the time. They would allow us, allow us to cross post to YouTube, and that's all I was doing. Eventually, I just took the video and just threw it over. And uh, because YouTube was desperate for content, they were giving getting giving anything reach. Wow! And and like you know, for context for people who aren't in podcasting, is like now there are tools like the one we're using right now, like Squadcast or Riverside, that record like really good native video and audio and then uploads it to cloud and that's what keeps you know the fidelity and everything high but uh, I'm, I'm guessing a skype interview was pretty poor quality back then. horrible quality and and yeah. by the way i i actually um funny enough when i first started podcasting um in 2012 2013 i have your i, I was using the yeti mic yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's a it's a yeah. good one yeah i started with a blue snowball before upgrading slightly yeah. um Yeti's good yeah. Um, so you're so you're posting to YouTube. Some of them are popping up and going viral. And then you said you got up to a hundred thousand views or a hundred thousand downloads per episode. What led to that? Was that the virality of the YouTube channel, or was that something completely different? Because I think this was kind of one thing I always like to ask podcasters: is the is the YouTube driving podcast? audio listening or are they just com completely different audiences yeah. altogether? Yeah, to be clear, it was 100,000 downloads overall per month uh, just on the audio. I wasn't actually taking YouTube into account and I actually don't know what the number would have been had I combined YouTube, but I, I think had I combined YouTube together, it probably would be a couple hundred thousand views per month. Um, and now now today we know like a YouTube view is extremely valuable. So. But like, what, what was driving the downloads of the audio podcast? Do you think it was yeah. YouTube or did it get featured on Apple? So I'll like be honest, we, we gamed it. Um, <laughs> so uh, Product Hunt at the time, so Product Hunt is where you can, you know, post your products and get upvotes, downvotes and things like that. Um, there was a podcast section back then. And uh, what we did was <laughs> we, so we would put marketing school there and we put leveling up there. Every, back then it was called Growth Everywhere, the podcast. And um, we just have people from my team upvote, right? And then people would be upvoting. And then every single day you would see marketing school and you would see um, leveling up basically, top one and two. And that just <laughs> that got us all the downloads in the world. Eventually Product Hunt had to shut down that section because we're just gaming it all the time and other people were gaming it too so yeah and so how far into running leveling up did you and neil launch marketing school so i would say i was about four years into it and then we launched marketing school okay so the leveling up was already pretty popular by that yeah, point it was, yeah yeah and, and i mean it was, it was cool because we had people like i didn't know how like niche popular it was because my, my friends would send me texts like they'd be traveling to like bulgaria or something and someone would be coming out of the cab showing like the podcast art um so that's when i was like, when I was like oh maybe i'm making it a little bit but go ahead yeah and so marketing school is unlike leveling up is more kind of just a chat podcast between you and neil where you kind of pick a subject every week that's somewhat topical and just kind of like you know talk about it yeah it's a little different now uh back in the day all we did was five to ten minute episodes and we pre-plan all the topics but after you share all your marketing knowledge for the first you know two years really you start to say the same stuff over and over so now it's changed to like i'm gonna be recording with neil in person on on friday because he lives like half a mile away from me but um, um, what we're doing is we're reacting to the news cycle. Um, and then, you know, whatever news coming out, we'll react to it. And that, that tends to give us a little news jacking juice where we kind of ride the trend a little bit. Um, and it gives us a chance to go viral too, because we cut up a lot of those clips and some of them will get like 6 million views on them. Yeah. And I was like, you know, just to give an example, I was just listening to some when I was preparing for this, this interview. And one of them was just like something you recorded right after the Trump Kamala Harris debate and just yeah. kind of analyzing their social media numbers and how viral the videos went and stuff like that to give mm -hmm. an example of how there's kind of like a news peg to it. So once you started running that with him and you were already getting momentum with leveling up, how did that, did, did the two, was there crossover audiences between the two? Did you notice that they helped, they kind of played well off of each other? Like what kind of synergies were being driven between those two podcasts? Yeah, I thought there would be synergies, but really not as much as you think there would be. Um, they're really kind of separate. Um, some listen to both, some people just listen to one, some people listen to the other. Um, so yeah, not, no, no real takeaways for that one. 
Yeah, and so you were also posting those to 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 YouTube early on as well. Yeah, we were posting those, to and that was working really well. But then we we weren't Neil and I were both focused on our businesses. We didn't realize that the YouTube connection broke along the way, and it was broken for three years, and we didn't, we had no clue. But the YouTube was actually compounding, and it was it wasn't even video; it was just the audio itself. And so, um, you know, it certainly helps to have a YouTube manager. That's another takeaway. Yeah. And so when you guys launched that is what, like 2016 or something like that? Yeah. Something around that yeah. range. I mean, it's, this podcast is older than his marriage. It's older than his kids. And so, uh, we've been around for a while. <laughs> yeah. So what was the, so you said that like, it was helping you get like invited to conferences and stuff like that. What was going on in your careers as all this was happening? Like it, I know that it eventually be- became a more sophisticated lead gen, but like, how was this impacting your career and, and what were yeah. you thinking in terms of like how this tied into your business at least in the early days when i first started the podcast maybe i was 25 years old or so um and then when i was maybe 26 26 i ended up joining this agency called single grain um and then 27 i was able to buy the company 100 percent for two dollars out of pocket and i seller financed the rest um so i i i had an agency where i had to basically um, the work we were doing no longer worked it was an seo agency right and so the work we were doing no longer worked it was ineffective and so i had to figure out okay not only am i doing this podcast right now but how do i save this company but also by the way i have no operating experience um so i actually made the company go from bad to worse um around 2014 to 2015 we actually dropped all the way down to one employee um But thank God for SEO because we started ranking number one for the keyword digital marketing agency. So we started getting all these leads that we couldn't fulfill. And I ended up referring all these leads out to other agencies. um, And we would take like a 25 to 30% recurring affiliate commission on it. So SEO really saved the business. Um, And then then we took those cash flows and then we we were able to hire, we're fortunate enough to hire some amazing people. And then from there, the company just kind of, you know, took off. Um, And so I would say, you know, while I was doing the podcast, I was really locked in on trying to save this thing. A um, lot of lessons from that. We can talk about that if you want. But um, yeah, that's what happened, at least for the the first round, I would say. And do, were you ranking so high for digital marketing agency? Obviously, that's a very competitive, especially since you would think digital marketing a- agencies would all have really top SEO yeah. skills. Was that pure SEO stagecraft or was the podcast or, or your online persona helping at all with that? I would say the online persona had nothing to do with it. It was just purely that ranking because it's such a high intent keyword. Um, and the re- the, the way we got there initially was we were doing a lot of guest blog posts. So we'd go to like HubSpot, for example, or like a lot of these high, highly, highly authoritative websites um, or Entrepreneur Magazine. And then they would be linking back to us, um, you know, in the, in the, like in the author profile. And, um, that probably took around, I would say, a good year to get there. And then after that, our traffic really started to take off. Um, but these these leads, I mean, eventually we started taking on these leads ourselves, but these were like Uber, these were like Amazon, these were legit companies, um, all because of that ranking. And you kind of mentioned this before, but you said you kind of fell off with leveling up. What happened there? Yeah. So with leveling, because I was so focused on the on the business, and um, you know, I stopped being consistent with it um, for a little bit of time, and then I came back. Then we decided to go hard on the YouTube channel. We hired a videographer and everything, and that's when the ch- the channel actually started to really do really well. Like each video would get, you know, someone get you know eighty thousand views, a hundred thousand views, and these are all just marketing videos. Everything I would post would work. Um, and then twenty twenty hit, and I st- I started being inconsistent with it again, um, and I actually started to stop posting as much, and then I started talking about other topics, right? that weren't as related to marketing. So when you do YouTube, you just need to focus on one topic. Um, even though you, you you maybe you might be a very dynamic person, I've learned that you just got to focus in on one um, and then YouTube will give you credit for that. But if you talk about too many different things, um, you know, they're not going to give you, you know, the reach that you should be getting. Hi there, Simon here. So that's the end of the free preview for this episode. If you want to listen to or watch the full episode, you have to become a paid subscriber to my Substack. When you subscribe, you get an automated email that allows you to book a half hour introductory phone call with me. Subscribers also get the full length interviews with some of the world's most successful media entrepreneurs. You can watch the video version, read the transcript, or upload the audio feed to your favorite podcast player. To subscribe, go to simonowens.substack.com. That's simonowens.substack.com or just Google the words Simon Owens and newsletter.